I'm Dr. Usha Jain and I'll show you the benefits of vitamin D3 in next several slides. I'm board certified in emergency medicine and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. The information about vitamin D can also be obtained at my websites janeemergicare.com, antiagingcenterorlando.com and also on YouTube page Usha Jain MD. Vitamin D3 and calcium are closely connected. Vitamin D3 is also called calcitriol which is a synthetic form of vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is important for the absorption of calcium from the stomach and is also important for functioning of calcium in the body. Vitamin D has neurotransmitter and neurologic functions in the body and it also affects the immune system by having anti-inflammatory effects. Circulating 25 hydroxyl D is taken up by numerous cells that contain one hydroxylase which can make their own vitamin D3 or calcitriol. These are the tissues which can make their own vitamin D3. Breast, prostate, lung, skin and lymph nodes, colon, pancreas, adrenal medulla and brain. What are the therapeutic benefits of vitamin D? Vitamin D has therapeutic benefits on cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, osteoarthritis, multiple sclerosis, depression and epilepsy. Vitamin D3 also helps in migraine headache, polycystic ovaries, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory conditions, musculoskeletal pain, cancer prevention and treatment and also helps in fibromyalgia. Death from heart disease are more common in the winter and in northern latitudes because vitamin D is deficient in the winter time because there is no exposure to the sun. The risk of MI is twice as high if the vitamin D3 is low. What about diabetes? Low vitamin D is associated with insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction from the pancreas. Metformin improves insulin sensitivity by 13%. Higher vitamin D correlates with 60% improvement in insulin sensitivity. The progression of the osteoarthritis is decreased or lessened by the adequate vitamin D in the body. Multiple sclerosis is rare in sunny climates because patients have enough vitamin D. Patients treated with 5,000 units of vitamin D are found to have less numbers and less exacerbations of multiple sclerosis. What about depression in mood? Vitamin D3 has a role in the improvement of the mood. Seizure can be the initial manifestation of vitamin D deficiency. Low vitamin D decreases the threshold for and increases the incidence of seizures. Some anticonvulsant medication also interferes with the formation of calcitriol. There is a study which showed that there is a reduction in frequency, duration and severity of the menstrual migraine in the woman with vitamin D deficiency. And that can be improved by the supplemental doses of vitamin D3 and calcium. The calcium can be given at 1200 milligram of calcium and vitamin D at 1200 to 1600 units of vitamin D. Patients with non-traumatic chronic musculoskeletal pain have a high frequency of vitamin D deficiency. Study found that vitamin D deficiency is more common in the patients with low back pain. Supplements with 5,000 to 10,000 international units of vitamin D per day decrease pain in almost 100% of these patients in 3 months. Vitamin D also helps in autoimmune conditions. 
Besides MS, the following diseases are also associated with vitamin D deficiency. Graves disease, which is a hyperfunctioning thyroid, ankylosing spondylitis, which causes the back pain, systemic lupus erythematosus, and rheumatoid arthritis. Study of vitamin D supplementation showed the anti-inflammatory effect of vitamin D evidenced by reduction in the factor interleukin-6 and CRP. Vitamin D3 prevents cancer. Inadequate exposure to sunlight is associated with the following cancers, breast, esophagus, colon and pancreas, ovary and prostate, bladder and kidney, lungs. Following cancers are also associated with low exposure to sunlight, the rectum, stomach, uterus, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. 50% of patients with fibromyalgia are vitamin D deficient. Vitamin D deficiency is common in women with PCOS, which stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Study found that supplementation with 1500 mg of calcium and 50,000 international unit of vitamin D on a weekly basis normalized menstrual cycle or fertility in all women studied with PCOS related menstrual irregularities within three months of treatment. There are many factors which inhibits the cutaneous production of vitamin D. If you have a clothing, if you have many layers of clothing, then it decreases the production of vitamin D. If you apply sunscreen and go out in the sun, it also decreases production of a vitamin D. Higher latitude in winter and early in late hours also decreases the production of vitamin D. The skin pigmentation, if you have a um, dark skin pigmentation, there would be less absorption and cutaneous production of vitamin D. Body fat, if the person is obese, then also there would be less absorption and production of the cutaneous vitamin D. Patient who is 70 years old produces four times less vitamin D than 20 years old patient. Drugs. Anticonvulsant corticosteroids and rifampin can also inhibit the cutaneous production of vitamin D. All right, then what are the foods containing vitamin D? Food is usually not a good source of vitamin D. As you can see, that only high, as you can see, the high containing vitamin D foods are. Only few. Cod liver oil, one tablespoon, 1360 international units of vitamin D. Herring is 1383 units. Catfish will give you 425 international units. Salmon will give you 360 international units. One whole egg gives you only 20 units. Fortified milk, one cup will give you 100 units. What can happen when the adults are severely deficient in vitamin D? It can cause secondary hyperparathyroidism, which causes increased bone loss, decreased BMD, which is a bone mineral density. It can cause osteoporosis and increased fragility and fracture risk. It can also cause muscle weakness and periodontal disease. The doses of vitamin D should be in the range of 3,000 to 10,000 international units. I recommend 4,000 units per day for adults. Full body exposure to ultraviolet light can produce 10,000 to 25,000 international units of vitamin D3 per day. And supplementation should be with D3 and not D2. Thank you for your attention and looking at these slides. Check your levels for vitamin D3 and start taking vitamin D3. 
If you have any questions about vitamin D, you can call Dr. Jane at 407-876-5555. Also, you can check at the website janeemergicare.com and antiagingcenterorlando.com. And please subscribe to the channel if this information was helpful. Thank you for your attention.